Hi, this is Joe Herman. I've just released a tutorial that covers several important techniques and skills in Cinema 4D, such as how to combine separate and distinct motion capture clips utilizing Cinema 4D's nonlinear motion clip system, as well as how to use Pyro, a remarkable and comprehensive fire, smoke, and steam simulator built into Cinema 4D, which you can use to create all matter of pyrotechnics such as fire, explosions, flamethrowers, and more. In the tutorial, we'll see how to import and apply motion capture data, how to use the motion clip system, and pyro to make this animation of a character jumping through a burning ring of fire, landing on the other side, and doing a silly victory dance. We'll begin by examining the basic setup of the scene. Then we turn to Mixamo, a free collection of motion capture data, to acquire four different mocap clips. Mixamo is a great resource, but you may use any motion capture library that you like instead. Using one of Mixamo's characters, we'll download all the motion capture clips that we need, as well as the rigged character, and bring them into Cinema 4D. Next, we'll convert the motion capture into native Cinema 4D motion clips to use them with Cinema 4D's powerful nonlinear motion clip system in order to string them together set their position in 3D space, and blend them together smoothly in order to create a single unified performance. After we're pleased with the entire performance, we'll move on to Pyro and learn how to use it to set up the fire simulations for the Ring of Fire. Since we don't want the entire ring to burst into flames all at once, we'll set it up so that it catches fire at the very bottom and have it grow out from each side until the whole ring is engulfed. After the fire spreads over the entire ring, we'll learn how to render the pyro fire with Cinema 4D's Redshift Renderer. Redshift doesn't automatically render pyro. There are some steps you have to do first in order for it to render. Once the fire and smoke is visible in Redshift, we'll learn how to refine the look of it by creating more detail and a better looking simulation. We'll see how to change the color and thickness of the smoke and fire, as well as to control how much of it is generated. We'll also add turbulence to the simulation to add visual interest. Finally, we'll make the character interact with the simulation by having him push through the smoke and fire as he jumps through it, resulting in a more convincing result. Pyro simulations must inherently calculate each frame starting at the beginning. That can be a problem when it comes to scrubbing through the timeline backward and forward or jumping to a specific frame somewhere in the animation. It will either not work or the results will be unpredictable. In order to fix that issue, once we are satisfied with the look of our pyro simulation, we will learn how to cache it. After caching, not only does Pyro play back faster, but you're able to easily scrub back and forth in the timeline or jump to a specific frame. The full tutorial, along with its accompanying files, is available for one low fee. I'll leave the link below. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next one.